Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Brews. Today we're covering Dortmunder Export. Let's get into it. I found 40 Dortmunder Export or German Helles Export recipes. Six were best to show. 18 golds, 8 silver, 5 bronze, and 3 award winning. My ranges uh, of winning beers from th throughout the years was almost four decades, uh, for almost five decades, 1981 to 2022. So a uh, big range of, of recipes. Some, uh, most of the data was here recently. Uh, we had some others. Uh, all, good, good range, good sweep throughout the years. BJCP Styles 5C, a golden German lager. Balancing a smooth multi profile with a bitter hoppy character in a slightly above average body and strength beer. When I look at the uh, evolution over time, there's a, a bit of evolution uh, over, over the normal. Um, however, they're kind of trending together. There's not a lot of variation between the recipes. Original gravity was anywhere between 1.048 to 1.060, with the mean of 1.053. Um, this is outside uh, the BJCP range. My recipe will be a little bit above that at 1.054, and I'll get into why in a second. Final gravity was 1.008 to 1.022. And a big, big proportion here of um, recipes that had final gravities outside the BJCP range. The average was 1.012. And I will be on the low side. And again, I'll get to that in a second. Um, gravity. Uh, this, is the, this is why I went higher on the original gravity and lower on the final gravity. We're seeing a, a good correlation trend for bumping up the original gravity a bit higher and for finishing it a bit drier. Um, so you'll see that reflected in my mash profile and l using less um, uh, crystal malts. I think, I think the, the, over time, the... The usage of less fermentable malts and uh, the, the mashing profiles have lended themselves to make it a drier beer. IBUs in range between 21 and 40. Again, a big chunk of it outside of the BJCP range. Um, the average was 27, and that's where I'll be right on right on the mean there. Uh, color, there's a very very narrow band of color between four and six SRM. Um, and the average is right at 4.5 uh, or 8.9 EBC, and I'm going to be just under that based upon the malts that I'm using. Uh, malt percentages, uh, the average uh, percentage of base malt was 93.5. Uh, specialty malts or crystal malts was 4.9. Toasted malts, uh, 0.4, and adjuncts 1.2%. Uh, when we look at if they use those malts, what was their what was their proportion of the malt bill? Uh, base malts were anywhere between about 77 and 100 percent of the grist, with an average right around 93 percent. Uh, crystal was the next most prominent between two and 17 percent of the grist, uh, with an average of right around uh, eight percent. Then we had uh, toast and adjuncts down here, just not using a big proportion of the of the recipes. I'll be using right around 95% base malts and, sorry, 4.4% crystal, which would be about right here on the curve, a little bit less than what uh, the average was over time. Um, when you zoom in on the crystal malts, um, again, anywhere between 2 and 17% was crystal. Anywhere between 3 and 21% was adjunct and just a narrow band of toasted malt. This is all melanoid and between 2 and 5%. And my crystal, again, right at 4.4, like I was going to say previously. Base malts, there were six different base malts used. Pilsner, Munich, Vienna, wheat, uh, mild malt, and a dark wheat malt. Uh, most prominent was Pilsner. Big range between 40 and 100% of the grist with an average of about uh, between 80 and 85 percent and then the next most prominent was Munich we had uh, about 58 percent of the recipes used a Munich malt between 2.5 and 30 percent of the grist uh, Vienna was a, a, the next one 5 to 20 percent of the grist or 5 to 20 percent yeah 5 or 20 percent of the grist but only a quarter of the recipes using a Vienna malt and then wheat and others kind of rounding that out I will be using uh, just above 80% Pilsner malt, 
uh, about 6%, 6 to 7% Munich. And I will be using a Vienna right under the amount of Munich, probably around 6% of the grist. We are seeing uh, for the recipes that use Vienna uh, a trend upward uh, in the amount of Vienna used. And because I'm using both Munich and Vienna, I didn't hit this number here. Also showing wheat malt is also another malt that's trended down. Uh, pretty good correlation coefficients there, so less and less wheat malt uh, used in recipes. Crystal malts, the two crystal malts used were carapils or light crystal, and I'll be using only carapils at 4.4% of the grist. Uh, toasted malts, not a big proportion of toasted malts here, about 15% of the recipes used melanoidin between 2 and 4.5% of the, of the grist. We had four recipes use flake malts as an adjunct, um, in very big varying proportions of the malt bill. I won't be using any adjunct in my recipe. Uh, there were a total of 13 different bittering hops used, middle fruit and, uh, being the most prominent, followed by tet, sots, pearl. That makes up three quarters of the recipes and then a bunch of others here of Germanic or pseudo-Germanic American varieties to simulate the, the noble hops from Germany. Uh, I'll be using middle fruit for my bittering hop. Uh, there were nine flavor hops used. Uh, Sots and Tet were the most prominent, followed by middle fruit and spalt uh, and some others. I will be using middle fruit instead of Sots or Tet. And the reason is, is that's becoming more and more prominent. Um, in the later recipes as the uh, hop to go to. These are not single data points. This is a combination of every recipe from that year. So uh, the, the likelihood of using middle fruit is going up uh, every year. Aroma hops, again, middle fruit, most prominent followed by Tet and Sots, almost uh, uh, you know, three quarters or more uh, of the recipes. And then some others, including some American varieties here. Um, I'll be using middle fruit for, for my recipe. Uh, here to note that Sots is being less and less used as an aroma hop for this style over time. There are two recipes that use a dry hop and they both use Sots. I won't be using a dry hop. These were very early recipes in the 80s that used uh, Sots as a dry hop. Uh, for the rate of hop additions, uh, they uh, kind of follow each other pretty perfectly here around 0 0.05 to 0 0.35 ounces per gallon was the hop rate. They both have the same mean of 0 0.14 ounce per gallon or 1.05 grams per liter for both flavor and aroma addition. A little bit more prominently used in aroma than flavor, but both big enough for me to want to put it in my recipe. Uh, and there are those two <clears throat> Sots dry hop additions, just not, um, not prominent and not uh, worthy of putting in your recipe. And I'll be right on the mean here. We're seeing no trending over time in the hop rates. Mash types, a uh, good, a good mix of infusion step and decoction mashing. Um, if you look at just temperature mashes, which are both decoction and step, they're, they're uh, make up of the bigger proportion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a step mash for, for my recipe, not a decoction. And here were the temperatures that the mashes were held out. Uh, we had a protein rest. Uh, 123 Fahrenheit was the mean for 27 minutes. A beta rest, 146 Fahrenheit uh, or 63 Celsius for 38 minutes. And then the main alpha rest was 152 or 67 Celsius for 52 minutes, just under an hour. I'm gonna be high on the protein. Uh, I am gonna do the beta. Um, and the reason why I added the beta, I normally wouldn't add something with this low of a proportion of recipes used, but I do want to dry this out. Um, so I want to do the, uh, almost a Hawker's, uh, mash here to try to dry this out as much as possible. And so I'm going to be a little bit lower on this, uh, temperature, the main sacrification temperature as well to help dry it out. And because we're seeing trending of that going down over time as well. So these are the, this is the protein rest and the main sacrification rest. So we're, we're coming down to about 151 and coming up in the protein rest to about 127, 128. Boil duration, big sweep here between 30, almost full bell curve between 30 and 120 minutes with an average of 80. And that's where I will be 80 minutes. 
Um, the yeast, there were 14 different yeast used. The most prominent was 2206. That's the Oktoberfest strain. 3470, 838, Carlsberg uh, lager strain. Uh, Budweiser, um, Augustiner, all lager, all pretty much lager strains here. Some some older ones too. Red Star lager. I don't think they make this anymore. Simplex lager. These are the older recipes. I never even heard of that one before. But uh, I'm going to be using. Uh, 3470 uh, rather than the Oktoberfest strain because we're just seeing a flip in prominence of these two strains over time. Uh, 3470 is just used in many, many more recipes uh, than, than uh, Oktoberfest. So I'll be using 3470 for my recipe. Uh, water chemistry. Um, you, you read about minerality of this style and it the data just doesn't really support very high minerality uh, of the water profiles used. These, these profiles were only uh, really provided in the later recipes, but it really doesn't support huge water burtonization of your water. Uh, 40 to 115 calcium with an average of 66, right? And these are always low. Sulfates were a good range between 10 and 140, but the average was 51. So we had some recipe, one recipe, I think, that kind of skewed this high point, um, but the averages were pretty normal. Um, five, between two and, sorry, two is the number there, and 100 for chloride. So I'm going to be, you know, following just a little bit higher on these, these two because we are seeing a bit of a trend up of the sulfate chloride. Sulfate's the orange curve, and chloride's the green curve. Very good correlation coefficient here. And, um, you know, a trend down on the calcium, right at around, and my water profile's um, really, really close to these numbers here. And I recently brewed this one. It turned out perfect. So, um, you know, try to hit these water profiles as much as possible. Uh, fermentation temps, wide range between 40 for one of the older recipes started at 40 Fahrenheit. Um, I don't even think 3470 will ferment that low. It'll just stall out. Um, and some short and shoddy high pressure ones that were recent that, uh, you know, fermented under pressure in 66 degrees. Uh, the average was uh, 52 Fahrenheit for all the strains and breaking down the Oktoberfest was a little bit cooler, right around 49 was the average. <clears throat> Excuse me. And 52 for 3470. Since I am using 3470, I'm going to try to hit that 52 Fahrenheit or 11 Celsius for my uh, fermenta fermenting temperature for this this recipe. Uh, I don't present this a lot, but I, uh, that's all some evolution, so I thought I would. The, the lagering duration was anywhere between, um, I think it was 26 days up to 150 days for lagering. Um, the average was, whoops, the average was right around 50 days. But we are seeing a trend down to <clears throat> really a uh, less than 40 days, so five, six weeks of lagering versus, gosh, these are crazy up here, you know, 100, 112, 20 days. Uh, carbonation volumes, the average carbonation volume was 2.5, and the average mash pH was 5.4, 5.39, 5.4. All right, here's the recipe that we come up with. I ended up with around 82% Pilsner malt, 7.4% uh, Munich malt. I'm choosing Irex Munich malt because that's what I have. 6.4% uh, Vienna. Again, I have Irex. So uh, use your favorite Munich and Vienna here. Choose a, choose a lighter Munich rather than a darker Munich. Uh, Care Pils, Care Foam at 4.4%. My hops, I'm going to get 21 IBUs of middle fruit at 60 minutes. Then I put uh, both uh, 0.14 ounce per gallon or 1.05 grams per liter of middle fruit at 15 and at flame out. And then I'm using 3470 yeast. Use whoever's is your favorite uh, from whatever yeast supplier you have. Original gravity 1.054, IBUs of 27, and my water chemistry is what we just presented before. 53 calcium, 11 magnesium. 8 sodium, 70 chloride, 56 sulfate, and 43 bicarbonate. That's just where it lands in the, when I build up my water from the brew father. 
shooting for about 5.4 pH in my mash. I'm going to do a step mash of 126 for 15 minutes. I didn't talk about this, but there was a, a trend towards a, lo a shorter protein rest, which is correlates to the better malts that we can get nowadays. So 126 for 15 minutes, 146 for 40 minutes, uh, 151 for 50 minutes. And we're going to mash out and sparge and boil it, uh, which correlates to the data. I'm going to chill to 50 Fahrenheit or 10 Celsius, oxygenate and pitch. I'm going to do a three liter starter for a five gallon batch. I typically do that for my low gravity, low-ish gravity loggers. I'll go even bigger for uh, uh, high gravity loggers. I ferment at 52 Fahrenheit or 11 Celsius for seven days or until it starts to slow. And then as it slows, raise the temperature to 55 and hold for a minimum of seven days to do a diacetyl rest. If you want to do a diacetyl test, do that. Um, I find seven days at, at a higher temperature really does take care of the diacetyl. Lager for six weeks based upon the data. Uh, bottle or keg and serve at 2.4 volumes of CO2. All right, that's the end of the presentation today. Um, the next style I'm going to cover, I am going to ch cover Czech Dark Lager. I have a special series uh, lined up for that, so you'll be sure to tune in to, tune in to that one. Um, until then, I'll uh, see you in a couple weeks or maybe even more. Thanks. Bye-bye.